So I've never really been happy with your standard Linux distribution model, where most distributions, what they do is they ship an ISO that launches you directly into a graphical environment, a window manager or desktop environment, and then a graphical installer, such as the Calamari's installer launches. And you know, that is, from a user perspective, it's all right. You know, it's pretty easy for most people to go grab an ISO and install Linux using something like the Calamari installer. But as far as people wanting to create Linux distros, because many people do, even if it's not something they want to publicly share, many of you guys, because I get questions all the time about how to create your own Linux distro, basically for your own personal use. Uh, and it's really it is a time consuming and somewhat complicated process to do it the standard way, building ISOs and installing calamaris and all of that. And I've, you know, I, I've had my own kind of Linux distribution. I haven't worked on it in more than a year. But of course, I created DTOS originally as a Arch Linux post installation script where you install Arch Linux however you want to install Arch Linux or Arch Linux based distribution. And then you run the DTOS post installation script where it adds the DTOS repositories of all of my software, the packages I build and maintain and the DTOS repos. And, you know, it does a lot of magic on the system. But, you know, a lot of people didn't like that. And I didn't like that because it did present some unique challenges. For one thing, depending on how people installed Arch Linux before running the DTOS installation, uh, there were some unexpected problems depending on what distro you were trying to install DTOS on top of. So then I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to build my own ISO. I'll do it the traditional way. I'll build my own ISO with the Calamari's installer. And man, that is a headache. For one thing, building ISOs is extremely time consuming. It takes a long time for an ISO to build, depending on what kind of equipment you have, but it can take anywhere from a few minutes to, you know, half an hour or whatever on a potato, you know, depending on the size of the ISO, there's a lot of different factors, but then, okay, you get the ISO built, you have to test it. Then you have to run through an installation of your operating system. And of course, on most systems, that's going to take 10, 15, 20 minutes, you know, somewhere around there to see if your ISO even works properly. So a round trip, say you have an error, in your code or something you had to go back and fix. Now you're gonna spend, let's say on average, about 10, 15 minutes building the ISO and then about 15, 20 minutes or so running through the new installation. You're looking at a, a minimum, you know, on decent equipment of about a half hour, you know, to go rebuild the ISO, run through an installation and test things, you know, for minor changes. And I'll imagine, especially in the early part of you creating your own Linux distribution, you're gonna to have to do that dozens of times, you know, possibly a hundred times or more, right? So it is extremely time consuming. So a couple of months ago, I got the idea of why not eliminate the need for a graphical environment or a graphical installer like Calamari's? Why not, in my case, I'll build an Arch-based Linux distribution, DTOS. I'll build an ISO, but I'm not going to install XORG or any kind of a graphical desktop environment or anything. It's just going to be essentially an Arch ISO with my own custom command line installation where I automate the Arch installation process. Matter of fact, you don't even need to know how to install Arch. I will give you basically a fully set up Arch Linux installation with, you know, the file system already, you know, configured for you. I'll, I'll partition the drive, I'll install Grub, the bootloader, and I'll do everything for you. All you have to do is type in a username and a password, and essentially in about 15 to 20 minutes, my installation script will install essentially an Arch Linux based distribution for you. And that eliminates a lot of headaches because no longer does the ISO take so long to build because I'm not installing anything on the ISO itself, right? It's just a base Arch ISO essentially with my installation script installed on it. That's the only extra thing I'm really adding to it. And then the Arch installation process itself is all automated. It will take a little time. It'll take a, a good 15 minutes to run through the installation. But as far as you, the end user, it's really not an issue. Again, you're going to enter uh 
username, password, and then essentially come back in about 15 minutes and it'll be installed. And I've been working on this for a few weeks on and off now, but I put in a lot of effort on this. And let me show you what I've got so far on this. So if I switch over to the desktop here. So I've built probably, I don't know, 50 different ISOs here in the last month or so uh, trying to get the new DTOS ready. So basically it launches the standard Arch ISO. You're in a TTY, that's all you get, right? No graphical environment of any kind, but I do have a script installed on the system. It is called, uh, right now anyway, DTOS install. And if I launch that, it's going to list your available drives on the system, it basically runs a LSBLK. That way you know which drives you have in your computer. Now this is a virtual machine, so there's really only one virtual drive in this virtual machine but on physical hardware you may have multiple drives in the output here and then it asks you to select the disk for the installation in my case I've only got one disk so I'll choose that then it will ask you to choose a Linux kernel because I know some people will not want the standard Linux kernel some people want the LTS kernel and some people may want the Linux Zen kernel so I configured this in a way to ask you which of the three kernels you prefer. I'm going to do the standard Linux kernel and then select your locale now I need English US UTF-8. That's pretty much standard. If you're not sure which to pick, pick that at least. And then select your keyboard layout. I need a US keyboard. And then time zone, of course, America slash Chicago is usually what I pick out of these lists. And then set the host name for your computer. I'm going to call this computer DTOS. And then it's going to automatically Partition the drive as ButterFS as the file system. It's going to also use disk encryption out of the box. I may or may not make this optional at some point, but for right now, we're just gonna automatically going to do ButterFS and Lux encryption. Uh, at some point, I do want to add options for if you don't want ButterFS to also have Extend 4 as an option. I'm not going to try to, I don't want to make this script with a ton of choices because I think it's pointless for the most part. Very, very few Linux users, as far as desktop Linux users, care about the file system. And if you do care about the file system, I would say 99% of you are going to want either ButterFS or Extend 4. So I'm not doing anything beyond those two if I do offer a choice. But let me go ahead and enter a Lux disk encryption password and then retype it. And then root password, let me set the root password and then retype it and then create your user. I'm going to call my user DT and then the password for DT and then re-enter. And then would you like to install the DTOS Qtile desktop because I'm going to install my Qtile config and everything if you want that. If you choose no to this question, this will just be a base Arch install essentially. Although I think I, I will go ahead and change the Pac-Man config to enable like the chaotic AUR. You'll, you'll still have some stuff enabled, but I won't install any of my uh, desktop config files or anything. But I'm going to install the Qtile desktop. And then we get a summary uh, just in case you chose something wrong. For example, if that's not the disk you want to install to, obviously, you know, based on this configuration, would you like to install DTOS? Yes or no? And in my case, this all looks good, so I'll choose one for yes. And then formatting the disk slash dev slash VDA. Uh, is this correct? Because all data on slash dev slash VDA will be lost. So it's just, hey, one more safety check. Do you really want to do this? In my case, yes. And now the automated process begins. It's creating the partition table. It's running fdisk, or actually I'm not using fdisk because that's an interactive program. I believe I was using either sfdisk or parted to... Uh, partition the drive here. Then it's going to run Reflector to get us the fastest mirrors for Pac-Man. After that, it's going to start installing packages, uh, the base Arch install, and then it's going to install the DTOS Qtile desktop packages. And all of this is going to take a little while. It's going Typically, it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm actually going to pause the video and I'll come back, assuming the installation does go as planned, which it may not because I constantly rebuilding this ISO and adding things to the script and finding errors. Uh, I just built this latest ISO about two hours ago and I haven't tested it yet. So let's see if the installation does complete. And it looks like the installation has completed. That installation actually didn't take too long on this machine. Uh, I've got a pretty beefy workstation here at the office. That installation probably took, I don't know, 10 minutes, maybe a little longer, but it wasn't terribly long. But the installation has completed. Let's reboot the machine. 
and see if DTOS properly installed. And let's go ahead and launch it. Looks like we had a grub menu, so it did properly install grub at least. And that, let's go ahead and enter our Lux encryption password. And we get to our login manager, SDDM. Now by default, because I installed Qtile, Qtile, the session is Qtile Wayland. That's not going to work. Don't even try it. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to Qtile with X11. And I should actually configure the ISO in such a way that when it installs Qtile, that the default login is Qtile on XOR. So let's go ahead and log in. And if everything works, you should see my Qtile desktop which you do so this is obviously my qtile config we get a little conky here uh, it actually drew the proper screen resolution because i configured this in such a way that if i'm in a vm just make it 1920 by 1080 screen resolution let's go ahead and do super enter to launch alacrity um, what else should i try if i do super shift enter we get rofi i installed brave as the browser let's make sure it launches correctly now brave was installed via the chaotic aur because brave is not in the standard arch repositories but on at least this iteration of dtos i have a couple of different repositories added to the pacman.com so let's go ahead and take a look at the pacman.com got some kind of error there with neovim but you've got your standard arch repos here in the pacman.com and then down here you got the dtos core repositories those are my configs for qtile and things like that i have to maintain those myself and then the chaotic aur so if you want to install things that have binary builds from the AUR, use the chaotic AUR, and that will include things like the Brave browser. There's two or three other packages I install out of the box that are found in the chaotic AUR, so it's something really nice to have. Plus, having the chaotic AUR here, I don't have to maintain as many custom builds of things in the DTOS core repo, which is a lot of work for me. If they're already found in the chaotic AUR, I'll just use the chaotic AUR. Now, I've been working on this, um, this installation script for a while, the, the ISO and the installation script. I really haven't spent a lot of time configuring the desktop and making sure the desktop works because, honestly, I'm only worried, does the installation process itself works? And I haven't got too many successful installs. I actually was very lucky to get this one on camera. But, you know, I've got, you know, a few different things here. The file manager, I think I installed Thunar. Uh, let's actually launch Thunar. Didn't theme it in any way out of the box, but I think I installed LX Appearance. Yeah, so we could actually do, you know, something like a, a dark theme, which is something I would do as far as an icon theme. I don't know if I installed any icons. I did. Uh, yeah, let's just install an icon theme just so we don't have the default themes. And then let's go back to the file manager. Uh, we're still getting the white theme. Did I not? Uh, come on. Apply. Let's see what else I can launch that is a graphical application. Oh, I actually, LX Appearance itself is a graphical application. So, but it is probably uh, GTK2, maybe GTK3, where I don't know if Thunar. Yeah, I may have to do something else to set theming on it. But you know, a lot of this stuff, this will be stuff that will be a lot easier to figure out than that installation script. So the installation script, I actually should go ahead and launch the terminal. Let's do a LSBLK. Make sure that we have our file system set up so you can see VDA was the drive. It created a boot partition and then VDA2, crypt root, that's your Lux encryption, right? And then ButterFS is your file system. And then you've got your ButterFS subvolumes here. Uh, nothing special here. It's kind of standard subvolumes you would typically create if you're doing uh, a ButterFS uh, installation. Eventually, I'll make sure that everything is set up with a snapper or, or some kind of, a, you know, a snapshot program so you can roll back if you have problems with an update or maybe just use a graphical tool like Time Shift or I think there's another one called like a ButterFS Assistant. There's several tools that you could use, but, you know, the main thing is actually getting the uh, sub volumes and everything correct and it looks like all of that is straight so there you have it a very quick preview of some of the work i've been doing here for about the last i don't know 
six weeks or so. It's been a slow work in progress. It's kind of a nightmare, actually, to create a installation script, especially a command line installation script to install Arch Linux, because not that it's necessarily complicated, but you do run into issues, especially when you're doing this, trying to build the ISO as well, because sometimes the ISOs don't build correctly. Now, but anyway, if this is something that you guys want to see me to actually complete, you know, let me know in the comments down below. I've had people ask me to restart DTOS to build new ISOs or to do the post installation script, but I, having already done both of those projects in the past, I don't want to do those projects anymore. I don't think those are the correct way. I think, yes, the post installation script, I didn't like. Building an ISO, I didn't like if it was a graphical environment, but just a standard Arch ISO and a TTY. And then you type DTOS install and run through that very easy installation script where I automate everything. Does that appeal to you guys? Is this something that you would like to see? Maybe you'd like to play around with? Maybe, you know, once I get to a 1.0 release, is this a distribution you'd actually use? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, Steve, 40 Millimeter, Cap Caveman, Darlof, Lee, Mark, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace, Orchard, Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Morge, into and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at what could be the future of DTOS would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, including DTOS, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.